Hey uh, everybody, this is uh, Jim at FreeChartVideos.com using time-honored techniques to understand modern markets. This video is for educational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as any form of investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you, and only you, have to draw your own conclusions from your own due diligence and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I am not a licensed professional, really and truly. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. We're going to look at a small stock here, uh, Hooper Holmes, HH. -H. Okay, the first thing I want to do is we're looking at a weekly chart going back all the way to 2002 when uh, Hooper Holmes was up in around the, uh, what, 10 buck, 8 to 10 buck range. And uh, it started a steady slide. And a matter of fact, we can go even back further than that and see that at one point it was uh, in a nice climb here from roughly 80, 90 cents all the way up to uh, close to uh, uh, $19. Then it started the uh, decline, and it has made a classic bottoming pattern. And this, uh, be honest with you, when I saw this chart uh, just last week, I really kind of, I don't want to say I got excited because that's kind of weird, you know, you don't get excited over a chart. Come on, it's just a chart. But when I saw the chart, well, yeah, I got excited. And, uh, and let me show you what I see is going on here. The first thing is there's a classic pattern. Those of you who follow my analysis um, we know uh, that I talk a lot about the inverse head and shoulders pattern because we've been seeing a lot of these in the markets lately. Uh, Hooper Holmes has one here. Here's the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder, and often the right shoulder is more shallow than the left shoulder. We've got that going right here. Uh, additionally, we've got a, uh, a well-formed neckline. And I've decided to draw this neckline over this uh, top right here as opposed to uh, right there uh, because it just makes everything line up a little bit nicer. So uh, I'm doing this. So we've got left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and we got a breakout. And that breakout did exactly what it was supposed to do, and that is a breakout on increased volume. Now, in some stocks, I'm not that concerned about volume anymore because of the uh, prevalence of high-frequency trading. But something tells me that, that uh, the high-frequency trading is probably not taking place in, uh, in this stock. Uh, just because of the, uh, the number of shares that it trades, I think if we were looking at Ford or GE, uh, uh, Las Vegas Sands, Cisco, you know, any, any of the big stocks with just a gazillion shares, then uh, high-frequency trading is going to be in on that more. Um, but I think thinly traded stocks um, are, are less uh, prone to the uh, distortion of volume that high-frequency trading can create. So we're looking at this uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern, which formed over uh, roughly three years. Now, what that means is it's probably going to take a good while for this to really see the benefit of this pattern. But at some point, H.H. Uh, Hooper Holmes should be uh, hitting uh, the $6 range. It's going to be a while. It, it, you know, it's possible that, uh, that it's now in a channel that maybe is going to follow up something like that for a while. Uh, you know, I, that's just a guess at this point, but I could tell you, based upon the chart, the long-term target is roughly uh, six bucks. Now, sometimes uh, with these inverse head and shoulders patterns, when they slope down like this, and this does have a pretty good, pretty good downslope to it, sometimes you have to uh, uh, adjust your target accordingly. The way you get the target is you measure the depth of the head from the neckline. That'd be this green line right here. Then you copy it over to the spot of the breakout, and you see where that goes. Well, it goes to about 650. But sometimes I've noticed when these things slope down, um, you have to move that target down with it too. So it could be that uh, if if uh, if HH were to move on up and tag this purple line, let's say uh, in a year. 
around 480, 490, something like that, then I would be willing to say that that's a, a, a close enough fulfilling of that target. So long-term target, um, I'll, I'll still call it six, but uh, you know, watch this line. Uh, additionally, if we look at it on a daily chart, we have a smaller inverse head and shoulders right here. And that also is an interesting thing to see because we can do the same thing with it. We can measure the, uh, the depth of this head from here to here. And I'm being a little conservative uh, instead of taking the full shadow of this candle here. And we add that onto there. And we end up with a target of about, of, of, oh, excuse me, of about $1.70. Now that target is not something that's going to hit uh, next week. Um, but $1.70 is something that I think you could reasonably be looking for, uh, you know, uh, within, within a few months. Uh, and if it really gets some steam, it could just hop on up there. Um, sometimes it, they'll do that. If we look at HH in even a smaller time frame, I think we're going to have to go to a two-hour chart. Let's go to a one-hour. If we look at a one-hour chart, you can see that uh, once it broke over the neckline of the large inverse head and shoulders pattern and the neckline of the small inverse head and shoulders pattern, it made a strong breakout, good volume, and then it pulled back, and the pullback was on lessening volume. It then f started to form a triangle. Now, I made a post in the, uh, in the, on the Yahoo message board about this uh, pattern. I said uh, it's got a height of uh, roughly, what, Ooh, 20, well, yeah, a, a height of, well, never mind. It depends on where I move this. It's got a decent amount of height to it, which means if we get an upside breakout, which we got today, uh, the target would be uh, somewhere a little bit over $1.20. If it had broken down, then uh, then we'd be looking at something around $0.70. Cents. But today, we got the upside breakout, and that was kind of what I was expecting. And it looks to me like the uh, late-day trading uh, did what is typical, and that is you get uh, the the breakout here, and then you get a pullback, and then it wanted to move back, then it wanted to pull back a little bit more. So there's going to be a little tug of war in here. But I expect that, uh, I, I fully expect that uh, $1.20 target to, uh, to hit. Uh, and that should hit within a matter of days. Uh, so we got different targets for this. If you're patient and you want to hold something for a while, um, I'm thinking this is one that you could stick with for, for a bit and, and see if this inverse head and shoulders pattern does what it normally does. These things fulfill their uh, targets once they break out about four times out of five. Some people say not as often as that, but I've seen some of the patterns that those people have pointed out as they're ones that didn't work and they're not some of them are not very good examples. This one is, is very good. So that's uh, H.H. Hooper Holmes. And uh, let's see what tomorrow brings. Uh, I think this is going to be strong. I, I really think it's going to head on up and tag this line at, at some point in the, uh, in the future. And it should not get below this line or this line. So uh, I'm thinking this is, this is in pretty good shape right here. By the way. Thanks for watching this video. I did this uh, just for the board at, uh, at uh, Yahoo for this particular stock. Um, and if anybody sees this, come check out freechartvideos.com. I do a daily S&P 500 update. Uh, I'm only going to be doing that daily uh, in, through the end of September. Then I'm going to uh, have a very affordable subscription service for that, for that particular service. Uh, but there will be a trial period. So anyway, look, just check it out. Uh, there have been a lot of bear analysts who have been taking people to the cleaners and losing people a bunch of money. And those people that started following me last October, uh, I think, have done pretty well. Because back when the S&P was around 1130, 1135 or so, 
uh, you know, I stuck with my call from 2009 for 1340 to 1350. And uh, I've got an interesting S&P video uh, that I posted today. So check that out. Thanks for watching.